What up, how's it going? And welcome back for another video. Today's video, we are going to be going through the 11.17 patch notes. It's actually kind of a large patch. It, the patch is being advertised as a smaller patch. I don't think this is going to be meta shattering or anything like that. A lot of the stuff that is the same from last patch will still be fine. There is a play style that is gonna, I think is getting phased out and we'll talk more about that. It's a very common play style right now. But a lot of what you're playing last patch is gonna be near the same, but I think there's potential for a lot of new builds and a lot of new stuff. And there might be a massive meta shakeup, but it might take a little bit of time. I don't think day one, we're gonna see a massive meta shakeup. Um, but there is potential. There's a lot of potential in this patch for, for big changes. So let's let's just dig right into it. So the first thing is going to be a system change. This is a very important system change. So I'm not gonna read this whole paragraph. What you need to know is spatula will now count as a bonus item in your item pool. So whenever you get a spatula right now on live, whenever you get a, whenever you get a spatula, it counts as an item. It's like equal to a, getting a chain vest or a sword, which if you guys haven't noticed in set 5.5, spatulas kind of suck. Uh, like they're good sometimes, but they're hard to build. Like the only spatula that is kind of plug and play every game is Cavalier Spat. Like that's pretty plug and play. And so now this is just going to be a bonus. So you could choose whether to use your spatula or not. And if you have a dead spat, it doesn't feel like you have a dead component. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you'll have a dead spat and you'll have a dead component because you can't combine them for anything. And it can bait you into playing something really bad like spell weavers or stuff or something like that. Um, important to note here though, this is actually a big buff to renewer and um and spell weaver because those are actually spatulas in those builds that work really well, Renewer and um, and especially Spellweaver, and Spellweaver is getting a big rework. So it's actually a big buff to that build that Spatula will no longer count as an item, especially because you were playing a Renewer and a, or Spellweaver build, you actually want your rod and tier. And so you're wasting two components to create a Spatula item, but now you only be wasting one component, right? Because the Spatula doesn't count as, as an item. So it's actually a pretty big buff to that build. And then it's a buff to every build, by the way because now it doesn't feel bad when you hit a spatula early. Because basically if you get a spatula early, you either build a Cavalier spat, most of, unless you're playing Spellweaver or Renewer or something, you build a Cavalier spat, or you just hope and pray to Mort that you get a Fawn. Um, so now it'll feel a little bit better to get a spatula. It's actually just a bonus. So it's actually a very nice change. You know, some people will be upset about this. They'll be like, man, this guy got a spatula. Now he has this extra thing to work with the whole game. I mean, it's way better than being in the situation where you get the spatula and you can't use it the whole game. Like that feels really bad. And you're like trying to lose trick, you get a fawn, you don't, just getting lucky. All right, anyways. All right, these are gonna be some large changes in here. So they're reworking Sentinel and they're reworking Spellweaver. I'm not gonna read this whole paragraph. I'll tell you what you need to know. Basically what's happening to Sentinel, you see there's, well, I'll tell you the but, or the nerf real quick. They're nerfing, you see the attack speed's getting nerfed at, uh, at six, which is, which is very great based off the change. And the shield is getting nerfed at three because this is the most dominating early game trait. They gave it a small nerf last patch and now they're giving it another small nerf. Sentinel is still really, really good. And Sentinel will still be a great opener. Three Sentinel, three Skirmisher. Still gonna be a great opener. So don't sleep on that opener. Okay, what you need to know about the Sentinel nerf or the Sentinel change, it's not a nerf. This is actually an overall buff to the comp in a way. Some people will see it as a nerf, but let's talk about what it actually is. So basically what, how Sentinel works on live right now is whoever has the most health gets the first shield. And that creates a lot of obvious problems because, you know, belt items are the best early game items, right? And so you create belt items if you want to streak, right? If you want to play a strong board. And then when you get an actual Sentinel comp going, you have to make a weird decision on... Do I put my belts on my carry? Like, do I put a Warmongs on my Lucian or Akshan so they get the get the bonus? Because them getting an attack speed bonus is really, really, really insane. Um, or do you put it on your frontliner? The other problem it presents is, do you even upgrade some of your frontliners and just put a put like a Zeke's on your Lucian so he gets the upgrade, right? Because he's a four cost. And so you have to make weird decisions on like, I don't upgrade my Rakan or my Aurelia or my Galio. Um, and if I hit the Lucian and I get a belt on him, it's crazy. Or the auction, and I get a, and I two storm up, get a belt on him, it's crazy. But then if you don't hit those units, and then you just didn't upgrade your front line. So it creates a really like first or eighth-y play style. It makes the comp very inconsistent. So what they're changing is the Sentinel with the most items will get the buff. Um, and it says if multiple Sentinels have the same number of items, the Sentinel with the highest attack speed starts with the buff. So basically the way the numbers work it would always, like, let's say you have three items on a Galio 
and three items on a Lucian, it'll always go to Lucian. And the same is true for like Auction. So if you put three items on a Frontliner, three items on a Backliner, it'll always start with the Backliner, which is what you want every single fight. You know, you want your second shield to go on your Frontliner after they've taken damage. You don't want the first shield to go there because the whole benefit of Sentinel is a permanent attack speed. That's the big benefit. So they're nerfing the trait because now it'll be way more consistent. So it's a nerf to the trait overall, right? But the actual play style will be so much more consistent. For me personally, I see this as a buff. Sentinel right now, it feels like if you don't like play a lot of Sentinel or you haven't paid a lot of attention, there's a big knowledge barrier in playing Sentinel that is not in any other comp that feels just wrong. It's not like the normal knowledge barrier. It's like, really, if you spent a lot of time working with Sentinel or actually looked at the numbers and went through the math, like you get such a big benefit that you don't get in other comps and it just feels wrong. So basically what you need to know is the comp will be way more consistent. If you haven't been playing Sentinel because you don't really know how to run it, it'll run a lot more like every other comp and it should be nice. I'm a big fan of this change. Um, yeah, because now you can guarantee which champion gets the shield, which feels really nice instead of having to do weird math and not upgrading anything. Okay, Skirmisher. This is a pretty big buff. Uh, they're going from six to eight. Now, a lot of the skirmishers are going to get nerfed. A lot of the three cost skirmishers are getting nerfed, but they're barely getting nerfed. They're barely getting nerfed. Okay. Um, I think skirmisher right now is borderline playable. I, at the beginning of the patch, I was actually playing a lot. I haven't been playing much of this last patch. I'm just a little burnt out. I'm excited to try this patch. I've been mostly for funning, but in that for fun play style, I'm playing a Grandmaster Elo. And I've had plenty of games. I played six skirmisher in, in top four. You know, it's a really huge spike at six. So uh, at level six, if you hit this or level seven, you hit this, it's going to be a massive tempo comp. So if you're going, to, if you want to play Skirmisher as a tempo comp, which basically means you just spike mid game and you play for top four or you play for a transition into a level nine comp or a level eight comp out and you know, you get out of Skirmishers, right? You get in the three Skirmishers or you drop them all together. If you want to play as a tempo comp, this is a massive, 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 massive buff. If you want to play it as a tempo comp, I've used this comp several times to just get the level nine. I carry a Jax, I two star all my skirmishers, I get the level nine, I transition out to Akshan. Um, so that's a big buff to that play style. But if you just want to ride out six skirmishers, I honestly think this makes skirmishers in the meta. This makes skirmishers a, it's still going to be hard to first place with skirmishers, but you could definitely second, third, fourth place with skirmishers. It makes skirmishers a lot more of a consistent comp, even though a lot of the early game skirmishers are going to get nerfed. Jax is not getting touched. Jax is the best carry of this comp. So if you haven't been trying skirmishers, six skirmishers, <laughs> give it a try. Sorry, I'm burping a lot. I just I just ate lunch. So <laughs> anyways, Spellweaver is getting reworked. Spellweavers will now infinitely stack. Think about that. It'll now infinitely stack. I think this is very cool. I think there are some very, there, there might be some OP interactions. Uh, I watched the Mort Dog rundown. They talked a lot about, you know, if you get Spellweaver Gwen, Spellweaver Fiddle, and you have a blue buff on somebody, maybe blue buff on your Gwen, you know, right? Obviously, blue buff on your brand. I think it's a really big buff to brand because brand can stack Spellweaver so fast. And you know the way Spellweaver works, it's it's anyone who casts a spell. It's not, you know, brand casting a spell doesn't just benefit brand. Brand casting a spell benefits spell cause. So if you're playing the A-bomb, the A-bomb uh, Spellweaver build, It'll now feel a lot better to look for four Spellweaver and maybe put actual carry items on your brand and think about that. So this this creates some weird priority on brand and blue buff. Blue buff is actually going to be a lot better item this patch and blue buff does not feel as good as well as Karma's getting buffed and Garen's getting buffed. So you may want to try doing some blue buff centric builds. Think about flexing brand and Karma, building Spellweaver builds or thinking about flexing to a Karma build. Um, that'll create some very interesting play styles. I don't know exactly how this is going to play out, but I think if you're already playing the A-bomb Spellweaver build, this is a this is a buff to the build. They are nerfing A-bomb a little bit, but this is a buff to that build. And it will create some interesting scenarios, especially with the extra spats that are going to be in the game, or not the extra spats, but now spats not counting as a component item. It's going to be much easier to get four Spellweavers with the spatula or six Spellweavers with the spatula. So I would give Spellweavers a try, and if you're already already running the A-bomb Spellweaver build, you might want to think about itemizing brand with a blue buff or something like that, or think about playing like A-bomb Mystics, making your Gwen into a Spellweaver, because she's getting a big buff and adding a blue buff on her. So I think blue buff priority has gone up quite a bit. I don't think it's going to be like super contested. Uh, maybe it will be, 
But if you are already wanting to do tier start and stuff like that, big buff to that play style. Okay, yeah, so the Spellweaver stacks are actually going down at, um, at, the, at the second level, so at four. But again, like I just said, it infinitely stacks. And if you have a blue buff on your brand or something like that, you, you hit the stack cap very quickly. So just, and, and later on in the game, you just get way more cast off because again, it counts as any unit casting the spell, not just your spell, spell weavers. Um, at least that is directly from Mort Doggerith himself. All right, so three costs. They're nerfing all the three costs, especially at three star. And they're even nerfing Nocturne. It's just not shown here. Um, or maybe they took it off, but they are nerfing, uh, yeah, they're nerfing all the three costs. Basically right now, how the meta feels, and I really don't like the meta, uh, you know, the meta is very flexible, but basically you don't feel rewarded at all for actually playing more standard, like going fast seven, rolling for a mid game comp, transitioning to uh, a late game comp. You know, most of the time it just feels like you hit a ribbon or you hit an Italy or you hit a Yasuo or something. You just build your comp around that. And you have a really strong early game because you're playing around a three cost. You have better roll timeage because you can roll at six, you can roll at seven. And then you just ride out of three costs and usually beat the players who try to transition to legendaries or four cost boards. I mean, usually those boards lose to the four cost plus legendary boards, right? Not just four cost boards, four cost plus legendary boards. But that player who did the four cost plus legendary board, they took a very big risk in order to get there. And that is the one person that succeeded. If there's two other people who tried to do that play style, Usually what happens is there's like three people. I mean, this doesn't always happen, but if there's three people in the game that are going to try to do a full transition comp, playing the game more standard, um, usually two of those players will fail and will lose out to the people who just wrote out an early game with a three cost, played around the three cost the whole game, and then boom, bam, boom, they get a free top four. So it feels very bad to play against, and it feels like you need to play that play style a lot. And if you're playing the more four cost centric style, it's very, very risky. And so what they're trying to do is they're trying to bring down the three cost so that it feels better playing the four costs. So let's just look at some of the changes. Lee Sin's getting a small nerf, uh, 50 health, um, and then he's getting 50 damage off of his three star. So this is obviously a nerf to the reroll Yasuo build because re when you reroll Yasuo, you really want to run Lee Sin as your secondary carry. Nerf to this build. I think Yasuo build is going to be pretty dead this patch as a true carry. Um, I think it's playable at high roll, but you might just think about playing Yasuo and Lee Sin as transition units. Um, in terms of like Lee Sin's playability and how strong he's going to be, if he's good to fit in your comp, he's going to be good. You hit a Lee Sin early, you should still be happy about hitting a Lee Sin early. They even buff the one star. So if you hit a Lee Sin out of your first, out of one of your uh, orbs early game, you should still feel really good about it. And especially with six skirmishers being buffed, you should feel really good about building a comp around him early game and hopefully transitioning to six skirmishers or transition to like a Nightbringer mid game. Lee Sin's still going to be very good. So you definitely don't, you, you definitely don't sleep on Lee Sin. You just don't want to carry him in a Yasuo build or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, and he's less valuable to slow roll for three stars for six skirmisher. That's why I think six skirmisher is going to be even more of a transition comp. Or you ride it out with a Jax two star. You just won't be looking for three stars quite as often. All right, Nidalee, she's getting her dodge chance nerf. God bless. Nidalee is the most OP unit in the game, I swear. Um, she's been so strong for so long. And she's getting her attacks being nerfed at one star. One star Nidalee just seems like she just <laughs> she just beats everything. Um, basically, what you need to know about this is you should still be excited when you get into Nidalee. She's still going to be super good early game. Um, you can build your whole mid game comp around her. And if you want to still play a, a Nidalee centric comp, she's not really getting nerfed at three star. I mean, she, her dodge chance is going down 5%. If you want to play a Nidalee centric comp and you really like that play style, this is still very playable, um, especially with especially if you want to run the like the Dawnbringer Classico comp with like Garen and Karma as like side carries, that play style is going to be good. The Nidalee Riven reroll comp is not going to be as good. That's a three skirmisher uh, Sentinel based comp. That is that build is not going to be as good. But if you want to play Nidalee in the Dawnbringer Classico um, and play around her in the early game, transition into a Karma duo carry with a Garen as like a frontline utility carry, that build is going to be good. Don't sleep on Nidalee. She's still good. Um, but just definitely need a nerf. She's the most OP unit in the game, I swear. Okay, Rakan, basically unchanged. She's going to see a nerf at three star. So again, it's going to be a nerf to that, you know, that pseudo, that Sentinel Skirmisher Dawnbringer reroll build where you sometimes uh, hit Rakan. I know some people like do Rakan centric builds, but I don't know how meta that is, honestly. Um, it's a nerf to that. But overall, Rakan two stars is going to be a super good unit like he is now. Rakan's a great unit. He just, 
It's just a big nerf to the three cost reroll gameplay. Uh, Riven's getting a big nerf. This is actually a pretty big nerf. 50 health, five attack damage. Riven is just so insane early game. I don't think she's as good as Nidalee, but basically Riven has a problem where she's strong every part of the game. If you still want to play a Riven Nidalee reroll build, I think it's still fine, but there's a lot of small nerfs here and it's going to be less of like you hit a Riven, you just have a free top four into playing that and you're going to be contested by three other people. I think if you're hitting the Rivens and you're kind of high rolling the build and you're not contested, you could still go for this Riven Nidalee centric build, but the payoff is just not going to be as high, but you should be less contested. So if you high roll the build, the build is definitely playable, but uh, this isn't just like you just go for Riven for free once you hit one. You can still play around her early game, but it doesn't just get, give you a free top four if you just want to play around a two-star Riven and then wait for the other Riven player that I transition to a three-star um, and all that good stuff. Okay, um, Riven is getting nerfed a little bit on the on these notes as well at the three-star, of course. And um, yeah, and then at the three-star again. So Riven is still playable, but it's going to be more of like, it's an option you can go for if you're if you're hitting a lot of Rivens. But definitely, when you're playing Dawnbringers, you might want to think more about going for the Dawnbringer Classico, which is where you just you just carry either a Riven or an Italy, and you and you side carry Karma with a Garen frontline. You know, it's more of a it's more of a fast eight play style. You use Riven or Nidalee as an early game carry, transition to a Karma and Garen for your late game. You, if you're wanting to play around Dawns, think about playing that play style more often rather than playing Riven and Nidalee centric builds. But again, if you're high rolling, you can totally play it. Sorry if I rambled so much on that. I know a lot about Dawnbringers. I play a lot of Dawnbringers, or I used to um, when I played a lot more. Okay, Yasuo is getting nerfed. Um, his attack speed is nerfed. That's fine. He's OP uh, as a one-star as a one star and two-star early game. And then they're nerfing his three-star. So essentially, I think the Yasuo build is somewhat similar to the Riven camp, that if you're high-rolling the build, it's going to be fine to play. But it's definitely not just you get the Yasuo and you build a whole game plan around it now. It's going to be more of like you're high rolling Yasuo and you're like, okay, cool, I'm playing Yasuo. So think about it more as like a high roll build, I think is going to be the correct way to think about it. I don't even think Yasuo is even that amazing this patch. I think he's definitely outshined by like Riven Nidalee. So if you want to play the Yasuo build, it's really going to be a situation where you're high rolling rather than a forcible build, I think. Okay, cool. Draven, God bless my boy is getting buffed. This is my favorite build to play. I love playing Draven. I love building stall Draven comps. And man, is the stall comp getting buffed. Okay, so Draven is getting this attack speed buff. I know this looks small, but Draven is already pretty decent. He's just not as good as like Lucian um, or Athelios with the right items and context, right? Um, and they're buffing Kale quite a bit. And if you are familiar with playing stall Kale or stall Draven, you can duo carry Draven Kale in a stall board and it is very strong. I, I play it a lot. It does feel slightly underwhelming right now, but they are buffing Draven and they're getting a big buff to Kale. So she feels like a legitimate duo carry. This is also this is also a buff to four and six Legionnaire builds. Um, if you were trying that out. Honestly, I bet I played that a lot at the beginning of this patch because I think it's a fun build. And I would have some success with it, but it would feel a little underwhelming sometimes. And they're actually buffing the traits a lot and they're buffing Draven. So if you're familiar with playing four and six Legionnaires, there's actually a lot of buffs to those. Um, and we'll, we'll look at that in a bit, unless they took it off of these notes. We'll look at that. So if you were playing four and six Legionnaire and you wanted to play that type of build, you might wanna give it a try this patch. It's gonna feel a lot better than last patch, especially since the meta is gonna be more focused around four cost on this patch. So you can actually use your comp better as a tempo comp mid game, which is what the Legionnaire build is. If you want to know how to play Legionnaires, four and six Legionnaires, I have a guide on, on how to play that build. I'll leave a link in the description and the comment section below if you want to check it out and you want to try this build on this next patch. All right, five costs. So Viego, where's Viego? Okay, uh, we'll look at Viego in a minute. Okay, Gwyn is getting buffed at one and two star. Basically, they want you to think about itemizing your Gwyn a little bit more. Gwen sometimes pops off and sometimes she's useless. So they want to make her more of a carry. Maybe like there's going to be games where the, the lobby is very magic damage heavy and you build like a mystic A-bomb comp, you know, like that could be a play and you itemize, you itemize your Gwen. Maybe you were maybe you itemize brand in the early game and you transition to like a Gwen mystic carry comp. So they're trying to open up opportunities for that. I don't know if it's going to be good. This is a big buff though. 50 is a big buff right here. I don't know if it's going to be good. But it's worth giving a try, building a Mystic Centric, maybe Duo Carry, a Fiddlesticks, and a Gwyn. Uh, I would give it a try. The other thing that is, is something to think about right now 
is that this is a big base stat buff 50 is actually really big and so if you get spellweaver gwen that should feel pretty good so really think about fitting gwen into like an a-bomb spellweaver comp or spellweaver comp uh with spellweaver spats on your gwen or think about building a like revenant mystic comp so think about those comps whenever it looks good for the lobby it, it might be good this patch i'm not really certain but this is a pretty hefty buff actually and then the three the three star doesn't matter i mean you don't three star her Okay, Heimerdinger is getting nerfed, so the attacks we nerf, good. Uh, mana nerf, good. Uh, basically, what you need to know about this change is Heimerdinger is even less so. The, what they want to get him away from is that people are selling two-star Vel'Kazes for a Heimerdinger as soon as they find it. This has happened less this patch with Heimer getting ner Heimerdinger getting nerfed and people finding better Vel'Kaz builds, right? Uh, basically, they don't want you to do that, right? And so that's why it's getting this this base this base nerf right here. So Heimerdinger will feel a lot less like a oh I hit a Heimerdinger my game is saved. You know it should feel a lot less like that. But if you actually transition to a Heimerdinger like you find a Heimerdinger two and you're building an Evoker comp, Evoker Renewer comp right Heimerdinger will still feel really good. The only downside of this mana nerf, the only like thing that that sucks about this is it'll make him even better with Archangels and make him either even more reliant. I mean, he doesn't rely on Archangel's deal damage. You can build crit, you can build death cap, you can build attack speed, and he still feels pretty decent, but he feels really insane if you get like a Sojin, um, Sojin Archangel's. And this is actually, a, his first cast will actually even hit harder than it did last patch, um, but it'll be much harder for him to cast twice. But sometimes one cast is all he needs. So in some contexts, this is a nerf. In some contexts, it's a buff. Basically, what I think about this is, and I've said basically like a hundred times in this video, but I will continue to do it. What I think about this is he'll be less of a, he'll be less of like, oh, I hit Heimerdinger, therefore I can win now. But if you actually build a comp around him and you have, you have really good itemizations with the Sojin, the Archangels, he'll actually hit like a truck. He'll hit even harder, but he just won't hit as often. So Heimerdinger is still going to be good when you build a comp around him, but it will be less of a, of a like, a get out of jail free card when you hit. Okay, Kale is getting a massive buff. God bless. Can you believe she had 650 health? That is like one cost numbers, man. Can you believe that? Or like two costs more so, but crazy. So she got buffed. Her tax we got buffed. Don't sleep on Kale. I don't know if she's going to be really strong, but they buffed Draven. They're buffing Legionnaire. Stall comps are already decent. I've ran a lot of stall comps. And if you're playing in lower elo, stall comps are great. I coached my friend and he, he, he loves playing stall comps. He wins almost every game when I coach him through a stall comp. Basically, if you don't know what stall comps are, you build around knights, ironclads, and mystics. You just buy time for your backline. And so you can legitimately run a stall comp built around Draven, Kale, Duo Carry. And essentially the way the comp works is, and I'll make a guide on this in the future because I love doing this build, I love Draven, is you build around Draven and then you get extra items to throw on your Kale because you know you're going to hit your Draven and then you could duo carry your Kale, right? Um, or alternatively, you can solo carry your Draven, transition to a Kale, um, like remake the Draven and, and then do a Kale solo carry with the Draven side carry. Um, so you can either duo carry or you can side carry Draven or primary carry Draven, side carry Kale. Um, that play style is getting buffed a lot. I know a lot of a lot of my friends, a lot of my personal friends, they're gonna be very happy about this change with Kale getting buffed. I'm very happy about Kale feeling like an actual unit. I am scared if she becomes OP, but I don't think that she will. Um, she's still a five cost. She's still it's a gamble to hit, and a lot of people don't even know how to play the stall play style because no one's been playing at this set, and a lot of people don't know how to play Legionnaires because no one's been playing at this set. I for one love playing Legionnaires, so I'm gonna give this build a try. It's gonna be fun. All right, Viego. There's a lot going on in these nerfs, or a lot going on in, the, in these changes. Here's what you need to know. Basically right now, when you get Viego, and you get a Viego 1, it is the most tilting thing in the entire world. You have a two-star carry, you're positioning perfectly. This is one of the reasons why I haven't been playing TFT. Like, there's a lot of things in the game that, burn, that have burnt me out, and this has been one of them. <sighs> Basically, you get your Draven, right? You have like a Draven carry build. I play a lot of Draven because I like him. I think he's fun. And you're positioning around a Vel'Koz, right? And then you you try to dodge a Vel'Koz, and then there's a Viego one, no items, jumps to your jumps to your Draven. He CCs him for five seconds, one shots him, and you take a 20 health loss because you mispositioned one round because you're trying to dodge like the other positional units. What they're trying to make Viego do is they nerfed his damage very, very, very heavily. Um, what they're trying to do is still make him get the value off a of CC because five seconds of CC, if he deals zero damage to your carry and he CCs them for five seconds, 
That is still worthy of being a legendary, in my opinion. You're CCing their carry for five seconds, right? And so he is less likely to one-shot them, especially if you have Mystics in your build and stuff like that. And what they're trying to orient him to is that when you're playing Viego, you should want to put an item on him. You know, when you get late game, like you get like a death cap and you just toss him on your Viego. Honestly, you don't feel any difference. I never feel any difference when I toss an AP item on my Viego, except for blue buff. Obviously, he feels amazing. Um, but essentially what they're trying to make you do is think about itemizing him and think about like Viego works a lot better when he, when he plays with Draven because he gets forgotten. He gets the buff, right? He works a lot better when you're playing Diana with him. So they're trying to make it to where he's not just like a plug and play you know, I just stole your I just stole your carry and now you can't play the game because you mispositioned one single time. Now you take 20. That is the most frustrating thing for me. You play like a game perfectly, or not perfectly, but you play a game very smartly. You econ out, you peek at the right time, and then you get Viego'd. You get pants grabbed and you're, and you're done. Um, the other thing, this is actually a buff right here. So at two star and at one star, actually, if you actually do succeed in stealing their carry or stealing somebody, they're, they're, whoever you stole will live a lot longer. So this is a buff right here. They will decay a lot uh, slower. So especially if you steal someone with lifesteal, that'll feel very good. Okay, items. Giant Slayer is getting buffed. God bless. Guys, think about building Giant Slayer this patch. Giant Slayer is already, already kind of a sleeper item. It's just not as slammable. Just think about this. Guys, A-bomb are still gonna be good. This item is great against A-bomb. Warmogs is the best early game item. Everyone goes for belts early game. I mean, not like not every single player, but you know, when there's defensive options, people love to grab belts. So belts are belts are always been has been the best tank item for the longest time. You are more likely to proc this because people build war monks as soon as they see it, right? People build around brawlers early game. So you actually will be able to hit some thresholds here early on in the game. And if you don't, it's still a 20%. So this is a big buff to champions like Draven, who's really great with his item. He has really high base stats. Big buff to Aphelios, right? His, his ult hits like a truck. Now it'll hit even harder, even when you're not hitting the threshold on backliners, you know what I'm saying? Um, and this also will feel very good on, um, so feel very good on, oh, who was I thinking? It feels very good on Velkaz, right? It'll feel very good on, if you have to build it on Velkaz, right? Man, who was I thinking? Oh, Varus, someone who has duo scaling, Lucian, someone who has duo scaling, because the way, you, if you don't know how Giant Slayer works, it's just, a flat damage buff. It's not AD or AP. So people with duo scaling are actually getting a big buff from this 20% because it'll feel really good early game. So actually a big buff to Varus because Varus is someone you play early who actually benefits from this. And then obviously Lucian benefits really well from Giant Slayer. So think about putting Giant Slayer when you don't have good options. Um, it still won't just be like something you insta slam unless the meta transitions to that. And you know, it's starting to dominate with all the belt starts. But then a counter meta is very obvious to that where you just do chain start instead. Um, so. Just think about building Giant Slayer. I don't think it makes it OP or anything, but it should feel a lot better and a lot more consistent to build early, especially if you want to play like Draven, Lucian, or Varus, champions that benefit very well from this item. Okay, so some smaller changes. So Monstros Monstrosity. So the A-Bomb is getting its armor nerfed. The damage is getting nerfed at five. Um, okay, this is whatever per star level okay this is whatever okay if you guys want to play a bomb spell weaver keep playing it it's still going to be good it's not going to feel quite as op but it'll still be good if you like that play style you can keep playing it especially with spell weaver getting buffed and you know it now have some brand options and stuff like that if you still want to play a bomb play a bomb it'll still be good okay uh legionnaire is getting buffed at four and six so guys again if you want to play the four and six legionnaire build i actually have played a lot it's a very fun build very i do a very draven centric build so um a Riven and Yasuo got nerfed, so even the build and the guide that I have is it, that whole build got buffed because I built it around Draven. So if you guys want to check that out, again, it'll be the link in the description and comment section below if you want to check that out. Okay, Redeemed is getting nerfed at nine. Almost no one ever plays nine Redeemed, but apparently it's overperforming. I mean, it looks kind of crazy, right? The stats do. Um, cool. Uh, Vayne is getting buffed as an item holder. I think this is really important to look at because you can now actually think about playing Vayne as as a better item holder for like Draven, Lucian, Aphelios, right? Um, and I do think the meta is going to be a lot more built around fast sevening and rolling around a four cost carry. I really do think the four cost are going to come on the rise with all the three cost nerfs. So Vayne is going to be much better because she is going to be a good transition unit. Also opens the door for three star Vayne, Vayne builds because three star Vayne builds are actually performing pretty decently right now. 
So if you like playing Vayne or you like playing Vayne as a transition unit, you like putting comps around her, this is a really big, really, really good buff to her. Okay, Ziggs, three stars getting buffed. I, I don't think that means anything. Ziggs sucks. Uh, but I guess if you want to play Ziggs, play Ziggs. Maybe I'm wrong, but he kind of feels like garbage. So um, whatever. Okay, uh, Kinnon is attack speed getting nerfed. That's fine. Kinnon is honestly terrible. Like, honestly, so unfun to play against. So cool, I guess. Uh, Pike is getting buffed. I love Pike. Cool. Um... Uh, they're just doing that to make it more likely he gets a second cast off. Cool, I guess. Uh, Seth's getting buffed. Seth's pretty underwhelming. I've been playing a lot of Seth last patch just for fun. Um, and But they're trying to buff him more. Around. They're trying to make him more of a tank. So this is cool. Uh, Seth feels pretty weak, so that's cool. Uh, kind of a buff to AD comps, I guess, and Draconic. And they're kind of buffing Ash. So buff to Draconic. Okay. Um, especially the Ash variant, because no one plays Ash. Okay, Soraka is getting buffed. This is just basically they nerfed her a couple patches ago. But again, they're nerfing Rakan 3, they nerfed Riven, they nerfed Nidalee, so that Sentinel, Renewer, Skirmisher build, that Dawnbringer build, I used to play a lot of it. Uh, this It's not getting buffed, but the Soraka variant of it should feel slightly better, but, you know, Soraka's still not going to be that great, I don't think. Especially with the four cost being a lot better and people going to be playing a more of a transition play style, it, it won't be as good. Okay, Ash is getting buffed because she feels kind of bad. So again, Ash and Set getting buffed. Maybe try playing Ash-centric Draconic builds, but I don't know. No one plays it right now because it feels pretty hard to play. Especially, you're still going to be thinking about transitioning to Vel'Koz because Spellweaver got buffed, right? So, I don't know. You could give it a try, but I, I, I still think if you're playing Draconics, it's going to be much better to play around like transitioning to Vel'Koz and, and playing a more Spellweaver-centric build, is like, which is currently how the build feels right now. You either play around your either play around your Zyra, transition to a Vel'Koz, or you keep your Zyra, um, or you transition to a Heimerdinger. That's probably still gonna be the play style, but maybe give Ash a try. Ash plus set, three star, maybe give it a try. I don't know. Okay, uh MF is getting nerfed at three star. I guess this has been performing well in the data. I, I don't know. I thought this comp was pretty not great right now, but um okay, if you're playing this build, it's even worse. So maybe think about not playing it. But Nocturne is getting buffed. Uh, one and two star. They're basically just trying to make him feel have a smoother transition. Honestly, I think it's a buff to the to the comp. It'll make it to where it doesn't spike as hard as a tempo comp mid game. Like once you hit your, if you like all in for a three star. This overall buff to the comp because it'll now feel a lot better to itemize a Nocturne early game. And when he pops up in your shop, maybe you can get excited. If you like playing assassins, keep playing assassins this patch. The only downside to this to this comp right now is a lot of times when you play when you want to like force around Nocturne. Nocturne and Riven use really, Riven and Nidalee all use the same items. We use very similar items, or they can use the same items. So this comp is less flexible. Like you can't flex out as easier, as easily. You'll have to flex out to a four cost if you end up not being able to play the board. So that's just something to think about. But also the other thing to think about, if you hit a really early two-star Nocturne, that is a pretty free transition. I fast nined with this board before at two-star, and now he's getting buffed. So that's a pretty free transition to a four cost if it doesn't look like you're going to hit the Nocturne. So... I would think about playing Nocturne as a transition unit, or if you like playing Nocturne as your primary carry, he still should be great. And he spikes a little bit harder on two star, which is easier to hit. So if you like playing Sins, keep playing Sins. Um, they should be good this patch. Okay, um, four costs. Okay, Fiddlesticks is getting nerfed. Honestly, th this is a small nerf to the Assassin comp, but still the Assassin comp should still be good. Basically, every every time I play Assassin, I feel like I get an Assassin emblem for free, just all the emblems you get in the game, and I always Assassin Fiddlesticks. So this, this is a nerf to that. As well as they buffed Gwyn and A bomb is kind of unchanged and Spellweaver Fiddle is pretty good. So they're trying to just like tentatively drop some numbers down. I've also had some fights where I'm running Revenants or I'm playing I'm playing Assassins. I don't even I don't even assassin my fiddlesticks and he'll be second in damage. And I'll have like a two-star itemized Diana. And he'll do like 3k damage randomly in a fight. So it's just dropping that down a little bit, but fiddlesticks should still be great. If you like playing fiddlesticks, keep playing them. Uh, Karma is getting buffed. Big buff to the Dombier and Classico build, which I talked about earlier. Maybe think about playing Karma. Also, blue buff should be better on this patch because of the Spellweaver change with Brand, and you can make Spellweaver Gwyn. So maybe tier star, if you like playing AP, you might think about flexing between Brand, Gwyn, and Karma when you get those items. So might, might want to think about that. Small buff. Um, but another nudge, Garen's also getting a weird change that is somewhat of a buff. Um, but if you like playing Karma Centric builds, or you like playing Invokers, or you like playing AP, uh, think about going to a blue buff opener and flexing around Karma brand, maybe running brand as an early game carry into a Karma, and think about running like Mystic Gwyn with Revenant and stuff like that. So there's just some more options with going blue buff. I don't know how strong it'll be, but just some options to think about. 
Okay, Auction is getting a attack speed nerf. This is not really a nerf. It, it is, it is. But if you play Auction carry, you're guaranteed to get the Sentinel buff uh, because you're going to put three items on him. So this is Auction is actually buffed this patch. Like that build is actually buffed because he is guaranteed to get the buff, like get the Sentinel buff. Whereas before, you would have to not upgrade your Galio. So your frontline would be really weak for him to get the thing. But now he will just guarantee get the buff if you put three items on him. So that's why they're doing this. This is a compensation nerf, not a real nerf to Auction. Okay, uh, Garen. Okay, Garen will get his first cast off. Slightly slower, but his second cast will come back quicker. So if you build Archangels, his second cast, he'll be more likely to second cast. But his first cast won't hit as hard as it does. But his second cast will hit nice. Uh, the Victorious trait, which is just his auto attacker for his ult, I believe. I mean, no one ever pays attention to this. This is buffed a little bit. I mean, who cares? Garen is still going to be great. And they buff Karma. So Garen's great. That's what you need to know. Um, he's more likely to get two casts off. But his first cast will come out a little bit later. But he usually always first cast. Um, cool. Okay, Teemo um, is getting nerfed at one star. Okay, that's fine. Teemo feels pretty OP at one star. But it's going to be even more risky going for Teemo, which does feel kind of bad. So just... You know, really think about whether Teemo is worth buying now, but he's still going to be great. Uh, just, just think about it. Okay, Cruel. So basically, the change they're doing to Cruel, um, and this is all you need to know about this. I'm not even going to read this one. All you need to know about Cruel is what the what the dev said is, if it feels like Cruel should go off, it should go off more often. Where right now, it kind of feels like there's a delay, and you don't know if it's going to go off or not. They just, they're just saying it's going to be much more clear whether it's going to go off. If there's Teemo and another unit left, it'll go off. Um, cool. Okay, Voldebear um, is getting a 100 uh, health nerf. I don't think this does anything. There might be situations where he doesn't cast. I, I hope this doesn't turn into the uh, Volibear is a meme and doesn't cast unless you have Revenant, which uh, whatever. But if you have Revenant, he should cast at one star still. So, But he'll be good to itemize. Okay, Stoneplate is getting buffed. Let's talk about who this benefits. Galio, Garen. Uh, yeah, Galio, Garen, Leona. Uh, early game, especially, so redeemed. Um, Galio, Garen, Leona, and Voldebear are going to benefit from this greatly. Also, Nunu, um, if you want to actually put that item on him for the A-bomb. So A-bomb actually benefits a lot from this. Big buff. Um, big buff to this item. Guys, I would seriously consider going chain start this patch, especially if Giant Slayer becomes somewhat playable early game. Chain might be pretty good. I'm gonna try some chain starts this patch to go for some stone plates, try it out. Especially if you wanna play or around like a night opener, you wanna play a stall build. I think chain could be a good item this patch, especially if you're comfortable playing redeems, comfortable playing stall builds, and comfortable playing like Garen or Galio because that is some of their best items is Gargoyle. Both, both sides of Gargoyle got to be really good. Also very good on Hecarim and Sejuani as well. Okay, uh, Gunblade is going to be buffed. Uh, the excess shield, shielding. Okay, here is some theory crafting. I've I thought about this. This actually is a big buff to Brand because of the spell we were changed. This is still going to be terrible on Karma. Don't build it on Karma. It's going to be a nice buff to Brand and a nice buff to Gwyn if you want to itemize them. If you want to play a Brand carry build, if you want to think about playing it, uh, he'll now... Since he can infinitely stack, he actually benefits from the healing effect a lot more. Whereas right now, if you want to try to play Brand, you really just got to go all damage and just like hope he gets damage off before he dies, right? Because you can't infinitely stack, but you could actually build like a stall with a bomb and a healing centric build around Brand. So a lot of these changes seem small, but there are some big implications if things do can become meta. Um, so that's that's pretty interesting. Um, okay, the only interesting things in, in this in this thing right here, I didn't know Lucian didn't get interrupted by Lulu's, Lulu's Polymorph. That's hilarious that that didn't happen before. Now, if he gets CC'd by Polymorph, he'll stop casting. But how often do you get CC'd by Polymorph when you play Lucian? Doesn't all very often. That's why I didn't know. Uh, Chalice, um, if you guys didn't know it was bugged, and on AoE abilities, it wouldn't properly get the 10% heal or whatever number it is. I think it's 10%. It wouldn't probably get the heal. Only like Brand would get it. Um, you know, it's only single target spells, so like Karma and Velkaz wouldn't get it, wouldn't get the heal properly, they'd only get 3%. So now it'll be normal. If you didn't know about the bug, nothing's unchanged, the item is just a little bit better. And then the other thing that's interesting is Aatrox. If if you notice, whenever Aatrox ults, if the if the champion dies, he doesn't actually heal like he's supposed to. And that can create some really awful interactions where your Aatrox would have won v 9 the fight, but he dies because 
uh, somebody else killed the unit while he was casting the spell. Now he will guarantee heal every time. So if you're playing reroll redeems, big buff to the build and all that good stuff. So what do I think about this patch overall? There could be some big meta shakeups. I think you should try some. I think you should try some stall Draven Kale builds. That could be interesting. Try some Mystic, especially if magic damage is meta. Try some Mystic Gwen Spellweaver builds. Right? You can try some just some Mystic Revenant builds with Gwen and Fiddle Duo Carry. That could be a play style. Um, three cost. That play style is not going to be quite as good. Going fast seven, rolling for a mid game board and transitioning into a late game board or built around four cost will be a better way to play. Six skirmishers as a tempo comp got massive buffs. Also, if you're if you like riding out skirmishers um, and playing the whole game, big buff to skirmishers. Try it out. Should be pretty good. Sentinel is going to be a lot easier to play. So if you weren't comfortable playing Sentinels before, it should feel a lot more like every other comp and a lot easier to play. Uh, Heimerdinger is still going to be great. It's just not going to be a less of a trump card. Like you get it and you go, ha ha, I have a Heimerdinger, therefore I win. Uh, should feel less. Viego is going to be a lot less annoying. Still going to be a really good unit. He's just going to be a lot less annoying. And what was the other thing that I wanted to say? Oh, maybe try Karma. Uh, try building con Try building Stone Plate. Maybe try some Chain Starts. That'll be fun. I want to try doing some of that. The Legion build. Try the Legion build if you guys want to check that out. And uh, I feel like I'm missing something that was really interesting to me. Maybe some stall brand builds. I think a lot of stall comps. Maybe the fights will last a little bit longer. Oh, redeems are basically buffed in every way. You know, it got buffed by Kale as, as, as a legitimate carry. So you can transition to a Kale if you want to play redeems, right? If you're trying to play reroll Varus, you're not hitting. Transition to Kale. Reroll Varus is going to be good. He's a very good user of Giant Slayer. Giant Slayer got buffed, right? Very good user of Giant Slayer. Stone Plate is a very good item in that build because you just toss a Stone Plate on your Aatrox or your... Uh, Leona. So if you want to play Redeems and you like playing Redeems, Redeems actually got really big buff this patch. So, and it's already a good build, so try it out. All right, that was a 40 minute video. Jesus. If you guys made it this far, sorry I'm burping so much, man. I just have a lot of gas uh, going today. Sorry, bros. If you guys made it this far, uh, make sure and let me know. It's always really interesting to me to see who, who stuck around with the 40 minutes of me talking about a video game, talking about balance changes. Uh, it, it's always cool to see. I read every comment and I respond to them. And so I, I'd appreciate it if you did. It makes me feel good and also helps me out on YouTube, of course. Uh, other than that, I stream daily at twitch.tv slash Trajan at TFT. I've been taking Trajan TFT. I've been taking a break from TFT right now uh, just because I've been very burnt out. I am going to play the new patch. I'm going to try it out, see how it feels. And, and maybe I'll keep playing. But right now, basically, I'm just like the only games I play are just for fun. My, my account's just been tanking. I don't really care. I've been pretty burnt out set five and set 5.5. Still been keeping up with the meta because I still want to make these videos for you guys. I still love talking about the meta, talking about patches. I love uh, helping you guys learn. I love making guides. So I've been just playing just enough to stay informed, to give you guys the proper information and give you guys the information that you guys deserve and make the content that I want to make. But um, yeah, overall, I've just been kind of for funning. And maybe this patch will, will be it for me. It might be a four cost and legendary centric patch which i love playing it feels very rewarding to me to play that play style so it'll be very cool to see if that's what comes of this patch other than that thanks for coming by today and i hope you guys have a wonderful day wonderful night and wherever you are hope you're doing well all right see you guys bye